Okay, I'm going to do a quick little video on the relationship between the velocity and the angular velocity. So the, the linear velocity, or the linear speed, and the angular velocity, which if you remember from the last one, is going to be the rate that this angle is going to change over time, if we call that theta. Okay, so if we look, we're going to start from our definition of a radian, which if we remember what this is, so degree in radians is basically it's the arc length isn't it so what it is it's some length of space so we'll do it on this one so if we looked out here the one theta if it was one radian would be basically when we have one radius length of an arc length over there so when this arc length between here and here which we call s is the same as or the same length as radius when s is equal to or that means inside here the angle is a radian okay so we just have a simple little equation for this so this is our angle or our angle in radians and that's going to equal to well the ratio between s and or so this this is our equation for radians yeah so this is the angle in radians maybe i'll just stick that at the top angle in radians okay How can we see that there we go Okay, so that's the angle in radians, and that's what this explanation is. So now, the last one we did, we got our other equation, didn't we? That we looked at the angular velocity, and we'll stick it over here. Say, so angular velocity. Okay, and we worked out that that was the little omega was equal to, it was theta, so the angle changed over time. Okay, and as we did, we saw in the last one, well, the speed. So what we want to know here is the actual velocity that this particle is moving at. And as we saw in the last thing, it's like, well, where, how quick this particle is moving, well, it depends on how far it is from the center. If we had a particle here, well, if we're going at the same angular momentum, and we get to this next point in two seconds, well, this one's going to have to move slower than this one, isn't it? This will have to move a lot faster, and equally, if I extended that out here to a point here and then we extended this out so the for this one to get from here to here in the same time that that gets from there to there it's going to have to be moving a lot faster and so we're going to look at this relationship okay and how it comes now it'll seem quite easy we don't not need to know this derivation but this is just if you want to understand how we get to it and all we do is well we look at these so we have our theta is equal to this now what's velocity well we remember this so we're just going to put in linear velocity say linear velocity well, this is a simple one as well so if we remember well that's velocity is just our displacement over time isn't it just the distance covered and in this term well s is going to be an arc length isn't it so our displacement our, our distance covered is actually an arc length so we can still use these so if we look now we're going to start with our angular velocity and we know well omega is equal to theta over t and so but we know what theta is because now we don't really want to talk about our angles we want to know about the velocity so if i look well theta is equal to s over or isn't it i'll we'll put that over here so theta is equal to s over or so then if we substitute that in well we can have s over or and 1 over t. So I've just substituted in there the theta for s over or. Okay, but we can do more than that. So if we look here, well, we have this linear velocity here, don't we? And we can actually make this up, and this is exactly what we want. So you can see, well, there's an s here and there's a, a t here, so we can actually substitute this in. So if we look then, our omega. And if I, I'm going to just rearrange this first, maybe. So we'll say s over t, and that's 1 over or. So I've just swapped these about. And then we know that this s over t, well, this is our velocity. Because that's just displacement over time, isn't it? Or arc length over time. So that's how far it goes by the time taken. So that's just its velocity. So we can look, and our now omega is equal to v over or. And that's exactly sort of what we want. Now, usually this is rearranged, and we just multiply or by both sides. So we're just going to have the velocity is equal to 
the angular velocity multiplied by the radius. Okay, and this makes perfectly sense of what we think about it. Well, the velocity that it's going to be traveling, well, it depends on, of course, how quick this is changing, isn't it? Because if it's moving really, really slowly, well, then the velocity is going to have to be super slow. But if it's, the angle is changing very quick, well, then the velocity is going to have to increase. So that makes sense. And then how far away from the center it is. And we can see that from this little picture. So if it's close to here, well, it doesn't have to travel that far. And it's going to have to get faster and faster the further out it goes. And so that's our little equation. And that explains how we get our linear velocity. This is usually considered and it's just our angular velocity and the radius, so how far it is from the center and how quick the angle changes with time. I hope that helps.